And one of the things that really interests me in architecture is when an architect is able to do a building that, quote, resonates, you know, with its setting and, uh, and just is able to capture that, uh, that kind of magical existence. I don't think I've ever done it. I, I'd, I'd like to do it uh, once before I give up the ghost. I'm driven by aesthetics so much. For me, aesthetics without a, uh, a real substance, uh, a functional base, is a real, real weak aesthetic. The Johnsons had a house that had a, a huge Douglas fir tree fall on it and crush the, the roof in. And one of the things they asked for was a, uh, a steel uh, roof structure of some sort that would uh, would protect them from, uh, from a large falling tree. So the basic structural skeleton of this is in fact a frame of the wide flanges. And because we had the wide flanges, we had the opportunity to, uh, to get some cantilevers that would have been more difficult with, with wood members. The terraces uh, help to extend uh, the house spatially at each end of this circulation area, which runs, of course, from end to end with the feature wall on one side, ends in a glass door with a uh, clear story, if you will, window above it. The Johnsons were not really interested in a wood exterior. Here's a straightforward everyday material that got a lot going for it. It ages well, it has a, a nice texture, it's uh, strong, it's inexpensive, it goes up quickly. Can't say enough good things about it. Of course, I like all, all materials. I have uh, a lot of uh, interest and value in granite and cardboard. They have their time and place. You know, doing uh, granite boxes to do shipping across the country would be uh, insane. And doing cardboard counters might be kind of sad, on the other hand. And everything has its time and place. And um, hopefully, you use a material where it uh, can excel and be, be at its best. The thing I like about concrete is, uh, again, that it's just it's this no-nonsense uh, kind of material that's just got all these positive uh, features. We're using materials that are, uh, you know, kind of very attractive in a lot of ways, and on, but they're not very humanistic. To me, they really need something of the antithesis uh, to help them. It's usually wood, and my favorite wood in the whole world is Douglas fir, which is uh, strong, plentiful. It's easy to work with, and uh, it's got a, a fantastic color, especially at night, and especially with, God forbid, pol getting politically incorrect, incandescent lights. It brings out just a warm, orangish, almost pumpkin-like glow that uh, just can't help but make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> well, I would say the Johnsons were more specific about what they w wanted and, and didn't want than, than most people. You know, I, th I think the relationship of the kitchen to, to the dining to the living was all uh, somewhat prescribed. So it was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle solving to put that all together into a form that was not uh, on the verge of a chaos, which is, of course, what, what an architect's usually dealing with is somewhere between uh, being uh, too uh, to <laughs> complete order and complete chaos. There's, a, there's a, a, a place in the middle there where architecture happens. So it, it goes back to maybe to what I was saying about wanting the building to be able to uh, resonate with its uh, setting. Uh, you know, how do you know, how do you know when it resonates or not? And just, well, uh, you just know. That's the answer. You ju you'll just, you'll know. <laughs> but not everybody will get it or, uh, or you know, or, 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 re or realize it. And um, I think it, uh, it, it's when it, uh, it probably raises, uh, gets your heart beating a little faster, or you just appreciate that, you just sense that something wonderful has happened.